What we're going to be going over here is the rate of return on common stock equity and trading on equity. Now trading on equity, that's where you're using borrowed money or issuing preferred stock to obtain a higher rate on the investment on those monies you're borrowing. Now companies go out and they invest in assets here. Well, they can spend cash here to buy these assets or most likely they're going to have some combination here of liabilities or debt. Uh, issuing preferred stock or issuing um, a, a, a common stock here as shareholders equity. So they're going to use some combination of debt here plus possibly preferred stock or shareholders equity as common stock here to generate funds to buy these assets. And really what I'm showing you here is the accounting equation on the balance sheet here where assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity here and I'm throwing in preferred stock separating that out here as shareholders equity here. Uh, it, more as a debt here. So what we're going to be going over here, we're going to have this situation here. and We're going to be looking at the liabilities and shareholders equity here of Corporation A and it's in millions of dollars. And this is just average amounts for the year here. So what they're going to have here, Corp A, they're on their they're going to have current liabilities here. We can go through just briefly go through these quickly here. They have 600,000. They have long-term debt here uh, that could be in the form of bonds where they're going to pay a 10% interest rate on those uh, on that debt here and they have 2,400,000 outstanding there and then they have common stock they have the par amount here at a million dollars and then the additional paid in capital of common stock that's eight million and then they have also issued here preferred stock fifty dollar par at an eight percent dividend rate here at a million dollars and they have sitting in there on the retained earnings here they have one million four hundred thousand so the total debt here plus shareholders equity is sitting here at fourteen million four hundred thousand dollars and our assets here uh, are also sitting at $14,400,000. So assets equals our liabilities plus our shareholders equity that we're showing here. So we've got, we've got, we know those are, all these are known amounts here. But what we want to be, look, we're going to be concentrating on here is this long-term debt here and also this preferred stock because we're going to be using debt plus this preferred stock for financing here. That would be financing assets. Okay, so now let's go down and we're going to be looking at also our income here for Corporation A here. We're going to be looking at how we determine our net income here and also what income's available to the common stock shareholders here. All right, so let's start out with our income before interest and taxes here at 3200000 Then we're going to have some interest expense. That's on that $2.4 million that was borrowed here, long-term debt, times that 10% interest rate per year. We're going to have $240,000 here in interest expense. So subtracting that here from our, our, our beginning income here, uh, before the interest and tax here, 33200000 we're going to come with income after the interest expense here of 2960000 Now, we're just going to throw in an income tax rate here of 40%. So based on that in income here, we're going to have an income tax here of $1,184,000. Subtracting that from our income here at $2,960,000, we're going to come up with net income here at $1,776,000. Okay, so we've got our net income here. Now we have to determine the income that's available to the common stock shareholders. That's the income that can be distributed to them. So first we have to subtract out this perspective preferred stock dividend and based on the par value we're going to have 20,000 shares here times the $50 par value at the 8% dividend rate so we have $80,000 here in preferred dividends that we have to reduce our net income by here to determine what's available to the common stock shareholders so making that subtraction here available common stock shareholders $1,696,000 now, this is where we can come in and we can determine our rate of return here on this common stock equity. So this is the general equation here. So we take our net income, we have to subtract out our preferred stocks dividends here, and then we divide that quantity here by the common stock equity, minus we have to subtract out the preferred stock par amount here. So that's the general equation here to determine the rate of return on common stock equity. So let's go and look at this here. 
So we have our net income here. We have that here at 1,776,000. Then we have that preferred stock dividend here we have to subtract out at 80,000. Then we divide it here by the common stock equity here of 10,400,000. So how do we get our common stock equity here? Okay, so that is the this is this is it. We can go back and look at our our first what we have listed here, but it go look at it here we got 1000 here 1 million here in the power amount here and that plus the 8 million here in additional paid in capital plus that 1 million 400,000 here in retained earnings so it's the what we're looking at is the par value here for our common stock plus the additional paid in capital that we have plus our retained earnings so that's our common stock equity here and that is 10,400,000. Now we have to strip, strip, subtract out a, the per, preferred stock, its par value, and that we deter, we had uh, was listed here at one million dollars. So this is where we our net amount here. After we net everything out, we got one million six hundred ninety-six thousand in the numerator, nine million four hundred thousand here in the denominator. That those are those amounts here. That division here or that quantity here equals 18.04 percent. That's our rate of return here on our common stock equity. Now comparing that to our long-term debt, we have a 10 percent here in our long-term debt and our preferred stock is paying that 8 percent dividend rate here. So here you can see at a rate of return on our common stock equity here is substantially greater than our debt or at least is greater here than our long-term debt or our preferred stock equity, which is a good thing. Now let's go and let's try to make some sense out of this here, uh, looking at this trading on equity and how that works. All right, so let's go up here and look at that. So trading on equity, that's borrowing money or issuing preferred stock and attaining a higher rate on the money that's used here. So this is the case here. Corporation A has improved their return on common stock equity through proper use of debt and preferred stock financing. And the shareholders win if, and this is the case here, the shareholders do win here, if the return on assets here is greater than the cost of financing the assets. Then the return on the common stock equity exceeds the rate of return here on the total assets. So this is really a definition. We're going to look at it here and how this falls out here. So number one here, our return on assets, that we calculate to be 12.33%. So well, let's go down and look at that here. So the rate of return on assets, that's simply our net income divided by our assets. And in this case, we had our net income here before that preferred uh, stock dividend was 1776000 Then our assets here, we had at 14400000 So the division here, rate of return on assets here, gives us 12.33%. So that's where we got our rate of return on assets. And indeed, it's greater than both the long-term debt here at 10% or the preferred stock dividend rate here at 8%. So there's the case here, where a return here on assets is greater than the cost of financing assets. 10% here for cost on the long-term debt here, and 8% percent on the preferred stock that's issued. Then we're then the return here in common stock equity exceeds the rate of return here in a total asset. So we can go down and make that comparison too here. So we have the rate of return on our common stock equity. Remember we calculated that already here. That was uh, the net income here after paying the preferred dividend here and that was 1,696,000 and then common stock equity here that uh, was that amount here that we determined to be nine million four hundred thousand dollars and that was the um, subtracted out the uh, preferred stock par amount here from common stock equity and the common stock equity was the par value of the common stock here plus additional paid in capital plus the retained earnings and that equated after subtracting out the par value of the preferred stock nine million four hundred thousand dollars so just you understand that here so the rate of return on equity was 18.04 percent we calculated that now comparing that to the rate of return here on our assets that's our second point here. So what we want to note here is the rate of return on equity at 18.04% is greater than the rate of return here on assets of 
12.33%. And that's simply through our definition here. Where, and that's a result here because our rate of return here on our assets at 12.33% here is greater than our long-term debt of 10% here or the per preferred stock dividend rate here of 8% here. Just by definition here, and if you go through all the arithmetic and math, it all works out this way. So this is the case here where Corp A is trading here in uh, equity at a gain. The money obtained from the bondholders and the preferred stockholders earns enough uh, to pay the interest plus the preferred dividends and leaves a profit here for the common stock stockholders. So that's really our definition here for trading on equity and it's at a gain in this case through the through our example here. Now we have the other option here where shareholders lose here if the cost of financing is higher than the rate earned on the asset. So that's the case here. So the, if the company is trading on equity at a loss and the stock, this is where the stockholders lose. So this is the case here where return on assets here would in this case would have to be less than 8% here. Uh, say it's 6 or 7% or something which be less than the long-term debt here at 10% or the preferred stock here at 8%. So this is the share, stockholders lose if the return here on assets would be less here than either your a cost of debt here or the cost of the preferred stock dividend right here. So that's the case here. Now, just, I don't know if we should go over this again here, but in this, our example here, the shareholders won here because the return on assets was greater than the cost of financing. The cost of financing was for our long-term debt and a preferred stock and a return on assets. We calculated that out to be 12.33% here. And then based on that fact here, our, retain, our return on equity here uh, was greater here than a return return on here on assets. And that falls out due to the this financing deal. So that's what we mean by trading on equity where we're borrowing money or issuing preferred stock here to get a higher rate on the money that's used. All right, so that takes care of our example here for both uh, determining here our common stock equity here and trading on equity.